Like much of the South, Florida has a subtropical climate. That means mosquitoes. And in the 1840s, mosquitoes mean diseases like malaria are rife. In 1841, an outbreak of yellow fever decimates the population of northern Florida. And in the middle of all this death and misery, there's this guy, Dr. John Gorey, who is about to start working on an idea that is so big it will ultimately transform all of our lives. Gorey's hospital is filled with patients burning up with fever. Gorey thinks that if he can cool the air around his feverish patients, he can both ease their suffering and stop the spread of disease. And so he sets out to build a contraption to do just that. This is how Gorey's design would have worked. He's, he's got a chimney bringing in air from above the hospital that flows down over this giant basin. And he would take these huge blocks of ice and put them in the basin. And the result would be perfectly chilled air flows over the patients in their beds, reducing their fevers, potentially saving their lives. But shipwrecks along Hurricane Alley mean delayed ice shipments from New England. So one day, Gorey's supply runs dry. Now, Gorey has the crazy idea to make his own ice. For all of human history, you couldn't even conceive of making artificial cold. But by 1850, the pieces had come together. In the 1600s, scientists used a pump to suck air from a jar and discovered the vacuum, proving that air was made from some mysterious invisible elements. We then found that when air or other gases are squashed together, they heat up. And when they are stretched out, they cool down. The thermometer comes along, followed by a universal scale or two allowing us to measure temperature. And now, amazing machines can be built that convert the heat from gases into a usable energy. John Gorey brings all these ideas together and builds America's first mechanical refrigerator, a machine that makes ice. In the 20 years following Gorey's invention, there are 54 separate refrigeration patents filed. Refrigeration becomes a huge industry, but the machinery of man-made cold is destined to get smaller as the idea of a once ridiculed amateur inventor becomes an essential part of the modern home. Here she comes a lucky woman who owns a new refrigerator. Between 1945 and 1949, Americans purchased 20 million of these revolutionary machines. Now, ideas about how to fill these new refrigerators will have an even greater impact on our lives.